there. From time to time, we come up with some great specials on Mansfields, Melbourne, both as far as community service is concerned, but also as far as your health is concerned. And this is where the Mansfield Star comes into its own. It's a revolution new bike that provides power, <laughs> resource, health-giving vitamins and nutrients. It's just like running uh, around Olympic Park on a, on a normal bike, but it's stationary. And we're giving <coughs> a very special offer this time uh, to purchase the Mansfield Star. We'll give you details about uh, how you can go about getting this bike. The man who's... <laughs> who's <laughs> The man, the man who's on this bike at the moment, it was a heart victim some six, eight months ago. He had the most massive angina, <laughs> acute angina, and an enormous coronary. That's all, that's all behind him now. <laughs> With the Mansfield Star bike, you too. We'll have the... <laughs> Jeez! I, I've never felt better. If you're a stroke victim, if you have heart problems, if you want to get vim, vigor and zest into your life, invest in a Mansfield Star. It'll do for you what it's doing for this man. Order now. Book now. This man stepped foot, <laughs> stepped foot on the moon. His name is Glenn Shorrock. Glenn, it must be as revitalizing today as it is when the day when you took that mighty step for mankind. Bruce, I've never felt better, and I've always said, one small ride for man, one huge ride on the Mansfield Star. Take it seriously, folks. Do better for your health. Your heart's pumping away at excessive great rates of knots. This is where the bike can help you. He's doing an altitude of 480 kilometers an hour it's good for aerobic and anaerobics if you send now we'll give you a set of splades and splads a steak knife and a scout knife but I don't have a drink of water it's good for you thank you oh shit. sorry this man was hugely overweight at one time what I, I lost five stone in two weeks but I wasn't allowed to get off the bike. Order now. Post office box in Richmond, Victoria will get you the Malvern Mansfield Star, or the Mansfield Star. It'll do for you what it's done for John Glenn and other men who have stepped foot on the moon. Is that an ambulance? <laughs> yes, we've just ordered it. Order now and be like my friend, Zesty and Zippy, on the Mansfield Star. <laughs> How's that for a nice inviting smile? From Glen Iris to Garden Vale, from Glen Waverley to Glen Huntley. <coughs> this is Mansfield's Melbourne, episode 223. A top 30 minute look at what's happening in town. A little late tonight following the races here on Channel 31, but thank you to Keith and all the boys over at uh, the Valley. Following our success on Channel 31, Mansfield's Melbourne calendar has been launched. Oh, that was a year ago. But following that success, we're now launching a free monthly newspaper. It's a magazine called Nightline Magazine. Tonight we'll tell you how to start collecting your copy of Nightline Magazine later this week. Wherever you are in Melbourne, there's a location close to you, whether it be a newsagent or a newsstand. But first, let's see what's happening in Melbourne community news on this Wednesday night. Plans for a $1 million seaside resort for disabled people will go ahead following the decision to scrap the Rosebud Marina. The Villa Maria Society says its resort will be the first of its kind in Australia. The resort is expected to create about 20 full-time jobs on the peninsula. A man using... <coughs> pardon me. A man using stolen checks and false identities to reap over $160,000 over three months is still at large. You always laugh on those. Well, I know a man very similar to that. The man struck again this month when he performed another bogus transaction at Southland. Security cameras have identified a well-dressed, <laughs> largish suspect in his late 40s, supporting a false beard and a funny nose. <clears throat> Two apartment towers <laughs> are planned for the Racecourse Hotel site in Flemington marvellous old location, the Racecourse Hotel. 
Under proposals discussed with the Moody Valley Council, the site will include a multi-million dollar motel and a restaurant in the shape of a clover. So appropriate because of the, well, racing and luck. And Simpsons fans can take a peek behind the scenes this weekend when the cartoon boss Mike Scully visits the Comic Art Gallery at 1011 High Street in Armadale. <laughs> you should take uh, James there. I know them well down there. His visit coincides with a large Simpsons animation art exhibition that runs from Saturday until February 15. The exhibition will feature 150 new cells never before seen in Australia. They're very valuable, those cells. Uh, our producer, Simon Owens, has a cell of Pippi Le Pew, which he bought for about 400, and I think things like Bugs Bunny is about five or six hundred, and Bart Simpson even more. So you should go down and uh, have a look. I can ring them up if you want to go down there. Oh, if you don't care, I don't. I'll just go down myself. I generally get up myself. And that's it for this moment. <laughs> it was subtle, but it's so hot. We'll be back in a moment. <laughs> could have knocked me down with a feather, it exactly describes the sensitive plant. Just a touch, and the leaves fold up. It looks sturdy enough, but just see what one tap with a feather will do. Just a breath. She hadn't been eating onions either, and it'll stay closed for about an hour. The poison or stinging tree, the most hated tree in Australia, is one of nature's spiteful little jokes. It looks harmless, but just touch it and the result is an agonizing pain lasting for weeks. So severe is the sting that it has caused the death of a horse within 15 minutes. As we wanted to examine it under the microscope, a piece of sacking was wrapped around the leaf while it was cut. A powerful lens showed tiny spears covering every part of the tree. These spears greatly enlarged are seen to have a tube running down the center of each one into a bulb of poison, for which no antidote is yet known. In tropical Australia, the traveler's palm, and one of nature's most kindly little jokes, stores a remarkable amount of water in an otherwise dry land. Slip the blade of a knife between those close-fitting fronds, and out gushes cool, sparkling water. Even on the hottest day, the water is delightfully cool, refreshing, and almost tasteless. Now, don't laugh at the echidna. It's one of our humble relations, a distant cousin. We humans are the most highly developed specimens of the mammalian family, and the echidna, or Australian porcupine, is the most lowly. An extraordinary thing about this queer creature is the fact that its young are not born alive. No, it lays eggs but its nest has never been found. Only small pieces of eggshell in the pouch where it keeps its babies. Nature must have really enjoyed the joke when she made the gecko. Goggle eyes, well-nourished body, and the most miserably thin legs. The world's worst acrobat. Come on, up now, be careful. But attempt to capture the gecko, and what a joke he has with you. He's left his tail behind him. It's only his method of getting out of a fight. Any creature attacking him would naturally go for the tail, which leaps vigorously about, keeping up an incessant squeaking noise. The gecko does not lose a drop of blood, and soon grows a new tail. Triangle comedy in Beetle Land. Miss Beetle is out walking. The villain pursues her. Enter the hero. You can. Take that. And that. That'll teach you to annoy a lady. A gallant heart beats beneath that beetle breast. Ain't love grand. There's no doubt about it, they seem quite vexed. But a black eye doesn't mean a thing to a black beetle. It's black anyway. No holds barred. His catch is catch can and biting is allowed. From a bull elephant to a beetle, 
All creatures are brave where their mates are concerned. One, two, three, four, five, and five's ten. Out. Here, almost the color of the mud it lies upon, is nature's most freakish joke. It is the walking or tree climbing fish and plays about in a little puddle it makes in the mud. It is a disgrace to the fish family, for if held out long underwater, it would drown. Its queer looking eyes are so sharp, and the creature itself so shy, that filming it is very difficult. The first man who said he had seen a fish, which could walk on dry land, was called every kind of a liar. Its gills have become modified so much that they now function like the lungs of an animal and breathe air. It is found in the coastal regions of tropical Australia. It doesn't mind the intense heat of the sun if it can find a pool to roll in and cool its back. A face that only a mother could love. As long as their tails are wet, they have no difficulty in breathing. The protruding eyes are one of its most extraordinary features. As it lives in mud, its eyes frequently become smeared. To clean them, it turns them right inside its head and out again. A rod and line is no use to catch the walking fish. You need a bucket and a spade. Immediately the fish catch sight of you, away they go. It's hopeless to attempt to run them down. They travel faster across the mud than a man can. In no time, they have all disappeared. Certainly went into that hole, but when he got there, the puddle was bare. The only chance is to use the spade and dig deep, for the cunning fish has made a tunnel running deep under the mud into which it retires when danger threatens. It must be done warily. The fish is so much the color of the mud that it may easily escape notice and be thrown away. There he is, caught into the tin you go. Sweet smile of the successful fisherman. What's a bit of mud, anyway? So that's fishing while well, I'm second to golf. Grab that fish, it has jumped out of the tin. So great is the pace it can travel at when alarmed, that without a casting net to throw over it, its escape is certain. The last we saw of it, it was climbing a tree. It can walk, swim, run, and climb. A few feathers, and it would fly. When the sinister head of the snake appears, comedy disappears. The powers of death given to snakes are a grim jest. No rending claws, no savage tusks. No gleaming horns or terrifying bulk. Just needle-like poison fangs. Or shining coils which become a strangling rope. The big white-tailed bush rat watches its approach. The steady stare of the snake appears to fascinate the rat. With its head poised, ready to strike, the snake encircles the rat, which makes no attempt to escape. Perhaps it has confidence in its razor-sharp teeth. The snake has declared war. The rat is game. Its teeth are getting in great work. It attempts to spring free, but striking swiftly, the snake has caught it, and the coils are wrapping steadily around the fighting rat. Time after time, the rat's savage teeth meet in the snake's body, but still those coils keep creeping tighter and tighter. All snakes belonging to the python family have no poison bags, but squeeze their prey to death. It is a case of endurance now. Can the snake or the rat stand most punishment? The snake appears to have won. Even so, it is keeping its coils well away from the rat's teeth. Slowly, the snake approaches the rat's head. Coil round the throat, and there will be no escape for the rat. See the steady contraction? Tighter and tighter the coils grip the now helpless rat. Another of nature's battles has been fought and won. The power of video is now more accessible than ever. Promote your products, train your staff, demonstrate your skills, video a conference, and put yourself on TV. On Mansfield's Melbourne on Channel 31, we use the services of Costel Vision. 
Yes, duplication of extra copies, uh, editing, overseas tape conversion, also old wedding films to video. Two Lara Close in Thomastown for Costel Vision. Ring Jeff on 9464 2852. some exciting weeks in my life, but never as exciting as this week for Mansfield Melbourne. With the launch of the monthly Nightline magazine, free to 460 news agents around Melbourne. Nightline is the nightly radio program that I do with Philip Brady, and I've done that from eight till midnight with Phil for nearly eight years now. Each weeknight on Radio 3AW, we go to air, and uh, I suppose a great achievement of mine was to bring out a little book of the poetry pieces. But our second great achievement is the Nightline magazine, which will be launched this Friday afternoon at Mace Booksellers, 309 Stevenson Road, Mount Waverley, at 1 o'clock. I'll be there, so will Ash, our radio producer, Simon Owens. Hopefully Phil, Simon will have his baby with us. And the Nightline magazine is full of readers and television viewers, short stories and jokes and poems and puzzles and photos. Plus there's a free classified uh, entry for all of your uh, classified uh, columns. As well as news agents, you can obtain the Nightline magazine from these following Melbourne specialists who also have promoted and are right behind the Nightline magazine. Win, hello Win at Solar Pools. 50 Jocelyn Court Doncaster. Phone 9848 1040. Also there's John. John, thank you very much at Sid Hawkins Restumping in Black Rock. Phone 95219251. Also stocking the Nightline magazine, and thank you for your support, Paul at PR Williams, 35 Howard Street, Greensboro. Phone 94344188 or 0418-390-329. Out at the uh, laundry service at, uh, at Patty D Laundry, thank you very much, Patricia, for helping us uh, launch the Nightline magazine. Patty D Laundry Room in Vermont. You can phone Patricia on 9872-3000 or 0419-569-667. Anthony has also stood behind us and cooperated with distributing our uh, magazine. Anthony from Amcor Cleaning out in Bulleen. Phone them on 0418-384-364. These are all the people who have helped in the distribution of our Nightline magazine. Wayne, thank you for your cooperation at Lumberjack's Tree Service, 67 Dorking Road, Box Hill North. You can phone 989, now I'll do that again, 9897 3460 or 019-185-222. Also, helping us in the landscaping area and distributing the Nightline magazine, Alicia at Professional Landscaping in Coburg. Phone 04-11-386-705 or 9304-1658. Thank you to Dorothy, too, and she's got a great little service as well as distributing the Nightline magazine at Anador's Pampered Pooch at number 7 Kingston Road, Lang Warren. Phone Dorothy on 9775-6261 or 0419-346-427. And to Kent, thank you very much indeed for your help, Kent, in uh, uh, distributing your, the magazine through Clavia Music. Clavia Music at 236 Lawrence Road, Mount Waverley, 9803-5658. And that's the news from the Nightline magazine available from this Friday, absolutely free at most news agents around Melbourne and Geelong, and also at the specialists that I've just mentioned. More locations in our programs tomorrow and Friday night.
Time now on Good Morning Australia to say how do you do to Bruce Mansfield. How are you, Bruce? Good. And Rich Bill is here too, who is the expert in all memorabilia. That's right. Yes, indeed. Let me just ask you something. Do you remember the very first time that we met? I'll tell you when it was. I was in Albury, and you and the family were driving through, and I can see you now in that lovely old car driving through, and you're all singing Let the Rest of the World Go By which was just a wonderful memory. Yes, I remember that. With someone like you. You, a pal, good and true. I heard you singing that last night on 3AW Did with you? Philip. Yes. And that was the song the whole family used to That's sing together. Right. yes. Did you have a favourite song you used to sing in the car? No, we didn't have a car, unfortunately. Oh, sad. I'm I, sorry. Well, you know, I came from an unfortunate background in that I didn't have very much money. Mum used to buy me a cap at Christmas, so I'd look out the window. Of course. But uh, we had a, we basically had a good time. Yes, yeah. of course. What have you got for us this but morning, my dear friend? Some lovely things for you. Have an you? Art Deco bartender cigarette dispenser. Oh, wonderful. Now, in the height of the fashion in the 1930s, when cigarettes were being smoked a lot, particularly in Germany, this was one of the uh, the most sought after of cigarette boxes. Lovely. Now you may take that from my hand, Bert, and you may try and open that. Where do you open it? I've got uh -huh. no idea. As he tries valiantly. Oh, what's ah. that? There, isn't that wonderful? So couldn't you imagine the Gestapo? Care for a fag? Well, I don't know whether, no, I don't think, I don't think I can uh, think of that at all. $95, Bert. $95? At, at the um, Bazaar, Chapel Street Bazaar. Wonderful. You will buy it for $95 and you will enjoy it. So there you go. Yes. A glorious Edwardian decanter disguised as an ornament, Bert. Oh, wonderful. Uh, a dear old fellow there sitting on a stump. It's like John Form. <laughs> <laughs> I do be Bob Form, yes. Uh, That's lovely. Tell us, tell us more. It's, a, it's made of bisque. Uh, a glorious bisque china. What is bisque? Bisque is a hand-painted uh, china um, yeah, ornament type uh, fabric that they made pottery out of. Why are you laughing? And this is, why? What do you mean? No, no, no I'm sorry. Oh, I'm about... just enjoying myself. Yes. And now, this would have sold for a penny. Who but... the hell is that? That's uh, Darcy. Jim, oh, Jim wonderful. Darcy. Jimmy Darcy, yes. Uh, he was the middleweight champion of the world and the heavyweight champion of Australia. And, that... and that was found in an orphanage, Bert. This is a very sad point, actually. He died very young. But that was um, found in an orphanage uh, and it was bequest to the, uh, or left to the orphanage. Mm. Uh, so it would seem that... Uh, wonderful. Yeah. You have a strong finish? I think I have. I've got a very big one here <laughs> that I'm thrilled with. It's a first aid case, Bert. Isn't that wonderful? We've got one like that here. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Now, when you were in, playing football in Ballarat, they would rush out if you had a problem, an injury. This is a, from Ballarat Football Club. Yes. Uh, if you had an injury or a, a strained ligament or a pulled hamstring, they'd rush out there and this was the old uh, liniment and Dettol and... Uh, uh, Optrex that they would rub onto the affected area. Mm. And the whole lot is uh, $145 at Chapel Street Bazaar. Yeah, you seem to be giving prices if you're flogging them this morning. Oh, no, just, uh, just for people's interest's sake. Yeah. I just thought you might like to see something special here, Bert. Look at that. Yes, I didn't. Isn't that absolutely wonderful? Please thank Bruce Mansfield. Oh. <laughs> and you're back with us. Now, that's it for another night in our city. Kind of nice to have... Got a bit of problem, all right. That's it for another night in our city. Today is Wednesday, January the 21st. This is the day when Olympic-born runner uh, Ron Clark was born in 1937. He carried the torch to light the Olympic flame, and I was there at the MCG in 1956. I was covering it for the Nine Network. How high were you, Bruce? Well, I was about torch size, uh, high above the, well, it wasn't there then, the great southern stand as we know it today. And Ron, beads of perspiration running down his... Uh, his armpit made his way up to the uh, the top level. Uh, it's the day also when comedian Benny Hill was born in 1925. The late English <laughs> you never see on television anywhere. Somebody wipe on the dirt with a Nike. The late English comedian was always more popular overseas than his British homeland. It's interesting. Would you like your birthday, anniversary, or special date mentioned free on this spot? Write your name, address, and birth date and send it to us at Mansfields, Melbourne. Birthday Club, Post Office Box 1278 Research, 3095. It's on your screen now. That's where you send your birth date, your address, and your name. And we'll mention it free on TV. Send us your birth date or your special date. Send it to Post Office Box 1278 Research, 3095. We've got to go, go, go now. We've got a big night ahead of us. But stay with Channel 31 for a great night of Melbourne Community Television. I'm leaving now to go over to 3AW to join Phil for the top-rating Nightline program on 3AW. And we'll see you all back here. Thank you, Pearl. Thanks, Bruce. Have a good night. Bye-bye, Pearl. Good night.